on that. You know, another area that <clears throat> has gotten a lot of attention uh, recently, and I think for good reason, is pair programming. Do you think there are particularly good uses or special uses of reflection in the context of pair programming and how people can learn from that? Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't sat down to think about it specifically, but off the top of my head, it seems like such a rich opportunity, right? I mean, it's practically built in, in the sense that, um, you know, it decouples the difficulty, the, the cognitive overload of trying to program and monitor or observe your own programming process at the same time as a, as a single individual, right? And that's a, that's a fantastic feature of this, this technique. Um, <clears throat> it encourages verbalization. It's kind of this real-time reflection on their process. Um, so there are many more, many, I guess, I would say many hooks for, for that kind of, of reflection to happen in a different context. And I think with a little bit of scaffolding, you can really, um, uh, much like the physics demos, Mauser's Mas physics demos, you can really make sure as an educator that your students are getting as much as possible uh, out of the, the pair programming um, uh, configuration. And, and that might help in particular for students who are reluctant to engage in it or are unconvinced of their value. Of, um, of what might, to them, at first appear to be a rather kind of um, artificial or arbitrary uh, um, uh, arrangement that they've been asked to, to be in through their work. Uh, 